Welcome to our online worship for the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Today we are thinking about forgiveness, why we find it hard and why it is so crucial as Christians that we do practice forgiveness. In everything we try to do what Jesus taught us and model God's love in our lives, even when it goes against our human desires for fairness. It's all rooted in what Jesus did. So let us pray the collect, the prayer for today. Merciful God, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Romans chapter 14, starting at the first verse. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarrelling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall. And they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honour of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honour of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honour of the Lord, and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, Each of us will be accountable to God. Here ends the first reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times, Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him, and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, 
they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. And his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Forgiveness isn't easy. When I was little, I remember having gotten into a fight with my brother, and after parental intervention, we'd been told to apologise and forgive each other. But when it came to my turn to say, I forgive you, I really didn't want to do it, because I knew that as soon as those words had come out of my mouth, I wouldn't then be able to get my own back. My brother would have got away with it, without my being able to exercise my childish sense of justice. Forgiveness didn't seem fair. When Peter asks Jesus if seven times is enough to forgive someone, he must have been imagining that there definitely was a number. There must come a point when there has been enough forgiving, and instead justice and retaliation can be served. Seven? That's generous, right? Maybe a few more times? But no. Jesus' response of 77, or 70 times 7 in some translations, is outlandish. It implies that forgiveness should never reach a limit. No matter what someone has done, or how many times they have offended, we should forgive. That is incredibly hard for us to really take on board. As human beings, we are quite fragile, and throughout our lives, even living in comfortable, peaceful situations, we will be hurt and upset numerous times by numerous people. And like Peter, perhaps we wish that there was a reasonable upper limit, that eventually it would be justifiable to say, no more, time for payback. But for God, for Jesus, there is no limit. This is even something that makes us angry at times. There are occasions when forgiveness doesn't seem fair. For example, on Friday, it was 19 years since 9-11. What about forgiveness there? Or what about forgiveness of a hit-and-run driver? Of family members who haven't spoken in years? Or forgiveness of people who voted the opposite way to us on Brexit? Forgiveness of poor government, of selfishness, of cruelty? Is there nothing where we can say, enough, I don't have to forgive that one? Well, no. To forgive does not come easily, quickly or simply. Sometimes it doesn't come at all. But Jesus teaches us that forgiveness is always the right path. It doesn't mean that there are no consequences. Justice is a key attribute of God. But it means being able to let go of that desire to get our own back. I think it's important to remember that we are all different from each other in the way we think, the way we relate to others, the things in the church or faith that we hold as precious. In his letter to the Romans, Paul is explaining this, that instead of being hurt or angry that someone doesn't do things the way we do, or that they have different values, we must give thanks to God and love one another. At the end of the day, we will all be hurt and hurt as we go through life but we are all also loved and forgiven by God. 
and this is what we should echo in our words and actions with each other. We should forgive, even when we think that forgiveness is totally undeserved. You know the saying, you are what you eat. Well, we are what we hold on to. We are what we store up in our hearts. That's why it's important for ourselves to forgive, because holding on to anger and resentment will only form us into angry, resentful people. But to be people of God, we must try to be like God. And that's a challenge. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaches us to pray for our own forgiveness as well as for others, that God would forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And that's because there is an interconnectedness between us all. Our own relationship with God isn't just in a bubble, but it has a ripple effect on our relationships with the people around us. We are forgiven fully so we too must forgive. And in those moments when we really struggle, we can still pray for God to forgive, even when we cannot. When Peter asks his question, he was probably hoping for an easy answer. But Jesus wasn't in the business of giving easy answers. Forgive, Jesus says, Forgive and keep on forgiving forever, because that is what God does, pouring down mercy like rivers on each one of us. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, as we come before you today, we are reminded that your love is never failing, your heart is open to us, you are more ready to forgive us than we are often to forgive others and even ourselves. We pray today open our hearts to your healing and life-giving presence. Help us to let go of deep hurts, of old grudges. We ask you, heal our wounds and our relationships. Loving God, comfort all who are having any difficulties in their relationships. We pray for all who find it hard to make friends or to get on with others. We pray for those who have difficulties at work or in their schools or with their neighbours. And for all who have been betrayed or deserted by a loved one. Loving God, surround them with people who care for them and to offer love and hope. We ask you bless your church, that it may reveal your love. Let us be an open and accepting church Let us be a forgiving and sensitive church. Let us be a loving and understanding church. Let your church be ferments of reconciliation in the human family. Lord, in all our dealings with each other, teach us to listen. Teach us to forgive, teach us to understand, teach us to love. Give us the courage to start again. We pray for our friends and loved ones. 
We pray for all those who are finding life difficult and for all those who are waiting for surgery or treatment, a doctor's diagnosis and for all who are alongside loved ones who are ill. Lord, we pray for all suffering peoples. And today we pray especially for all who are longing to receive or to offer forgiveness. We ask, have mercy on them, fill them with your love and with your grace. And so we entrust ourselves, our church, our world into your loving hands as we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of our God always be with you, wherever you go, wherever you are. Amen. We make our way into the rest of this day, the rest of this week asking God to help us to nurture forgiveness in our hearts, for we are loved and forgiven as children of God. So be in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.